Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Citizens Financial Group, ticker CFG. This company is operating in the banking industry and over the next few minutes I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. The company has a market cap of $18 billion, enterprise value of $25 billion as is a bank that doesn't tell you nearly as much in terms of leverage because all banks are pretty highly leveraged um, bank holding company for citizens bank which you may have heard of provides retail and commercial banking products individuals small business and middle market consumers um, so banks are pretty standard for a lot of part there's a lot of differences to them but it's not going to tell you too much in the business description now, one thing I see here is normally you get 20 years of um, information here on return on equity, but we're only given 10. I'm gonna make it a little bit of a harder analysis here because it looks like a, basically looks like a startup here, which I don't think is necessarily true, but for whatever reason, that is what we get from this setup. You see is Citizens Financial Group founded in 1828, so we know it's not a startup, but we're only getting a certain limited amount of data. But using the data we have, let's ignore 2011. Let's say 2012, you had a 5% return on equity. 2013 was a, a pretty big loss. Let's see if there's some reason for that. Not exactly clear. Um, but since 2014, we have a little bit more of a stable business. 4%, 4%, 5%, 8%, 8%, 8%. 4%, 10%. So this is what I'd want to judge is 2014 to 2021. And what we can see here is pretty a pretty stable business doing okay, but the return on equity is just a little low. Again, your return on equity is averaging around 5%, but return on assets 0.9%. This means in part that their leverage is a little low. Again, with a bank, you'd want to like 10x the return on assets for what a normal leverage ratio might be, which means you should be running a return on equity of about 9% with this return on asset ratio. Now, either way, 9%, 5%, both are a little too low. Those numbers need to be double digits for me to consider investing myself. So even though banks can be really attractive investments, they're driven a lot by this return on asset and return on equity number. And this is oftentimes management choice. Or if they're subscale, then that can be a problem for them as well. But I mean, if you have net interest income of four and a half billion dollars, you're not subscale. You have scale. You're just operating very inefficiently. And so the company is very unattractive. I'd call it and consider this a low quality company because you don't see any sign of being able to operate at a rate that's required um, to be high. Now, it does trade for a price that reflects its low quality status. PE of 10, price to book below one, um, all of that is pretty reasonable. However, this price to book probably needs to be even lower. Um, price to book of maybe 0.5 might be justified for a company with a return on equity of 5%. Now, the most recent year was 10%, so if they can sustain 10%, then maybe 0.8 could be starting to be in the good deal range. Um, but it's not exactly clear. There's no clear cut definition on valuation but the clear thing I can say here is I don't feel like a PE of 10 is cheap based upon what I'm seeing. Now, we can see that they're growing, growing at 3%. Again, PE just need, is just not cheap enough despite that because you have this return on equity. If you hold a company with a return on equity of 5% for 10 years or 20 years, you should expect a return of not much more than 5%. So just something to be aware of. Um, nothing really... Um, is piquing my interest here on this one, either in valuation or business quality. Relatively low quality, relatively low valuation. But we might be surprised as we dive in further. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, you can get notifications to upload new videos each and every week. I'm working through every company in SP500. And if you want to know when that newest video comes out, you need to be subscribed. So please subscribe to my channel and we are going to work through every company. Now, income statement. Interest income. Now, one thing that's interesting is the interest expenses collapse. Now, part of that is, of course, driven heavily by the federal funds rate. You can see what happened here when they hiked the interest rates in 2018, 2019. Their interest expense went up and it went back down again as it collapsed. Um, but their interest income went up as well. This is pretty typical for a bank. Now, non-interest expense is quite high and they have relatively low non-interest revenue. And so that is a massive factor in their business. So they've grown... Um, some measure here of you can see some measure of operating leverage taking place though which is a good sign net income going from 600 million to 2.3 billion but again it's really hard to tell it's probably better to judge from 2014 as i was doing and then you're talking about a 3x here on the net income line but that's important because you're less than um, a 2x on the net interest income line so they are increasing with operating leverage here and so i really like to see that 
um, in terms of business. So it looks like this part's being managed well. Maybe that 10% could actually get a lot better. If you see this number go 10%, 11%, 12%, 13, 15, and it's trending towards that 15% range, then this company could be very, very attractive. Um, one of the banks that I own, that is exactly the trend that they have, is they started at a really low return on equity and it steadily grew over time as the bank became more and more efficient as they grew. So you can see that. One other thing I want to point out on the income statement is they are steadily buying back shares. You've seen their share count drop from 560 million down to 427 million. So they've bought back at least 20% of their shares in a decade. Adds about 2% to your earnings per share growth, which is pretty attractive. Um, balance sheet. It's hard to analyze the balance sheet with with quick eyes that pass here on banks, um, but you can mainly see that the the shareholders' equity hasn't grown a ton. Um, you know, twenty four million to start, kind of dropped down nineteen million, getting back up to twenty four million now. So there's not been a huge growth in the book value of this company, despite having grown in size. So that's not that's a not a positive, and part of that's driven, of course, by the fact that it's a low return on equity company. Um, you know, property plan equipment, there's not a huge use for that in, in cash flow for a bank. Um, so it shouldn't be surprising that you have these share buybacks taking place right here. I don't really know why there's this much stock-based compensation for a small bank. You know, $50 million a year is pretty high. Um, but they are buying back and offsetting those share with share buybacks. So, so that's okay. Um, you also get dividends. So you're getting dividends and share buybacks, which, you know, is approximately where most of the cash is going. Um, a little bit for growth, but, but not else otherwise. For me, there's nothing exceptional about this bank. If the trend of improving return on equity continues, this could be a very attractive bank in the long term, and it could be a very attractive entry point here at a PE of 10. But if the return on equity never hits 15%, then holding this company is going to be a poor decision. But if you are a believer that this return on equity is going to continue and you're going to see this chart just go up and up to the right over time, then this could be a very attractive entry point. So for me, that would be something that you'd have to consider. You'd have to do further research. If you're really into studying banks, that's a point that I would look into. But for me, I'd rather find one that's already trending well in that direction, and I don't see that trend here. So for me, I pass low quality based upon its current status and the PE is just simply not attracted enough for a low quality bank like this. Price to book gets below 0.5. You can start to get a little bit more attractive, but at current price to book, I am not attracted to this stock. Thank you for listening. Please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell so you can get notified as I upload new videos each and every week. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.